Good morning, everyone. Thank you for starting the day out with me. I'm Jenna Stauffer. All right, in honor of the upcoming Mel Fisher Days, which will be taking place July 11th through the 14th, I'm going to start things off this morning with a story that will give you a little inspiration. Now, Mel's motto was always, today's the day. His perseverance and his dreams not only changed his life, but it also changed the lives of countless people, including my first guest this morning, Golden Girl, Jean Thornton. Jean, thank you so much for being on the show with me today. Oh, thank you, Jenna. Good morning. <laughs> well, Jean, I really, really enjoyed hearing your story about your connection with Mel Fisher. And Jean, why don't you start by telling our viewers a little bit about how Mel Fisher came into your life? Okay. Um, it was in January of 1996, and I was visiting Key West for a long weekend with some friends. And my friend Debbie and I wanted to definitely see the Mel Fisher Museum because we knew the story and we were impressed with his find. And, and so we went to the museum. And as it turned out that day, um, Debbie wanted to go in and see the video. And we didn't have time for both of us to go. I had to go meet some friends. So I was in the gift shop, bought some replica earrings. And while I was there, the um, lady who sold them to me, Sherry, said, well, Mel's in the back. Would you like to meet him? And my eyes just bugged out. And I said, mm -hmm. sure, of course. So I went back there and started talking to Mel. And it was like I met my very best friend. He was just so wonderfully charismatic. He grew up in Indiana, and I grew up in Indiana. Um, my mom's maiden name is Fisher, although I, I can't claim any relationship to Mel. Mm -hmm. But anyway, it was just a wonderful meeting. And of course, he gets out the gold chain and the gold disc. And you know, we're, I'm just like in awe of the whole thing. <laughs> so anyway, when I met up with Debbie later, and she knew that I had met Mel, she was furious. So I took <laughs> her back, and we saw Mel the next day. And at that point, he said, well, you know, I'm still taking investors on. And, you know, if you want to invest and um, you can still, you'll get paid in treasure and yada, yada, yada. And if you're a diver, you can actually keep whatever you find when you go diving. And so I said, all right, Mel, I'm going to learn to dive. And <laughs> Debbie looked at me like, you know, who are you? What's <laughs> happened? So here we were, these two school teachers in our 40s went back home to Birmingham, Alabama in January and signed up for dive classes. And mm -hmm. it was literally like I've said so many times for those who are old enough for the reference, Lucy and Ethel learning to dive. We <laughs> made every single, you know, faux pas you can possibly make. But we had such a wonderful time. And we came back the following July. And sure enough, true to his word, Mel had a boat come get us and take us out to the site. We went out to the Dauntless. And um, on our second Atocha dive, we found, well, I found this coin that I wear all the time, and we also found one of those gorgeous 21-link, very ornate gold chains. Mm -hmm. And so that's how the nickname Golden Girl came to be. It mm -hmm. really doesn't have anything to do with, you know, the um, B. Arthur and Betty White kind of gold. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, Mel was just the most influential and, like you said, absolutely persevered, positive, mm -hmm. always, every day, today's the day. And I remember so many wonderful stories about him. You know, he, he looked for the Atocha for 16 years. He lost his son, daughter-in-law, and had so many hardships along the way, faced bankruptcies, um, had to fight over 100 court battles just to be able to keep what he found. But he never, ever, ever gave up, and he was so positive. And um, I remember one of the divers early on, Mark Remy, and he was actually with us on the dive with the gold chain, said, you know, someone told me never tell Mel that something can't be done. And I, I don't remember the specifics now, but he was in the office one morning, and Mel said he wanted the guys on the boat to do thus and such. And Mark said, oh, Mel, we can't do that. There's no way. He said, Mel didn't get mad, but he took me in his office, and we stayed in there all day long until we figured out how we could do it. And mm -hmm. I guess that really impacted me because I thought, you know, we put up so many obstacles for ourselves in mm -hmm. our own lives because we think, oh, I can't do that or that can't be done. But, mm -hmm. you know, it just 
he really inspired me with mm -hmm. what you can do. Right. Anything, yeah. anything is possible. Right. And he definitely, that was also, you know, his motto. Yeah. Today's the day and, and anything, anything is possible. Now, Jean, I just love that story. I think it's just absolutely <laughs> fabulous. And after you went on that dive trip, you continued to just come back and dive time after time. I did. I was hooked. I mean, mm -hmm. when you find gold and when you just even pick up something and you're the first person to touch this piece of history that's been mm -hmm. on the bottom of the ocean for nearly 400 years, mm -hmm. it's the most amazingly incredible experience that you can ever imagine. And it really, truly changed my life. And um, it was at Mel's memorial service in 1998 that I decided, I was still teaching school at the time and just coming down whenever I could for short vacations, but it was at that point that I decided I'm going to retire and follow my dreams mm -hmm. and because that's how, what Mel did. And so I retired and was able to come down here and work in the summers and work, you know, spend more time down here. And, and really, I worked in the office. I worked in the conservation lab. I've worked in every part. But the, the really fun part was when I would get to go out and work on the boats and, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. do some diving. And um, it's not easy. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like Mel said, if it were easy, everybody would be doing it. That's and very true. That when the Atocha sank in 1622, a second hurricane came through and broke the ship apart. So there is actually treasure um, underwater for 10 miles, mm -hmm. um, you know, and under sand. It's mm -hmm. buried under sand. So it's not easy at all and it's a very you know tedious time-consuming process but it's so much fun and on those dives when you do find something sometimes it will be all encrusted and you won't even know what it is until mm -hmm. it goes back to the lab and goes through the conservation process but it's mm -hmm. really always just a big thrill and of course when you find some precious metal or some jewels some mm -hmm. emerald or you know something like that then that's even a little bit more exciting. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> it's definitely such such an interesting process, all of yeah. it. And now, the Mel Fisher Days will be coming up July 11th through 14th. Yes. We've been putting the information on the bottom of the screen, so if you want any information on the celebration, just check out the website. Jean, thank you so much for being on with me this morning and sharing your story. Oh, <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah. Oh. Now, do you still dive to this day? I still do them? dive to this day, okay. yeah. Okay. I haven't in a year, but it's been, it's been um, a couple of years since I've been diving, but you know, mm -hmm. I'm kind of letting other people have a chance to find some stuff now because I've found my share of goodies over mm -hmm. the time and so I'm not <laughs> diving as, as much as I used to. But oh, um, okay. anyway, you, yeah. You've got the memories too. So. I do, I've got the wonderful <laughs> memories and I'm still very close. The family of Mel Fisher, all of them are wonderful people. I mean, mm -hmm. Mel was, everyone that's ever worked with him will tell you what good people the Fishers really are and they're mm -hmm. down to earth and they're mm -hmm very um, kind to all their friends and investors and all that kind of stuff. And so this year for Mel Fisher Days, which um, the first event is going to be a costume party this year at Schooner Wharf, and that's on the 11th, and the contest, and first place is an Atocha coin, and second place is an emerald, and all kinds of great prizes mm -hmm. for that. And then on Friday night, there's going to be a meet and greet at the Smoke and Tuna, and also a, a charity cook-off. And then on Saturday, there's a big street fair in the 200 block of Duval, mm -hmm. and the Dorfels are going to be playing. Okay. And then Sunday night, they do a midnight gambler poker tournament, Texas Hold'em poker tournament. And um, it'd probably be good if anyone wants to go that they go ahead and enter into that because Internet. it fills up pretty fast. But last year, they donated over $14,000 to the Wesley House Family mm -hmm. Services, which is a wonderful organization and mm -hmm. so the family still continues to do to do great just that. charitable things all right well wonderful well we've got to take a quick break right now but again thank you gene and for more information just check out the mel fisher website i'll be right back after these messages